We were talking about Batman as a cyborg. I'm not the hero Gotham deserves. What's the problem here, as seen from a Catholic and transhumanist perspective? A really common way of thinking about the different stages of possible civilizations is the Kardashev scale. So a Kardashev level one civilization has managed to harness the energy potential of its home planet. Mm. We're not there yet, but we're sort of halfway. halfway there, right? That I can see how we could get to relatively easily, but stage two is where you manage to harness the energy of, of your local star. So how would a civilization go about doing that? How would we do that? Well, we have already started in a sense. We have some satellites orbiting the sun with solar panels. We could imagine adding more and more solar panels to space. And eventually you just cover the entire sun. You have an orbiting sphere of uh, orbiting panels. This is called the Dyson sphere of the Freeman Dyson. The physicist who suggested that we should look for them as signs of advanced civilizations uh, out in space. So you would harvest some kind of body that's close to the star. So in our case, Mercury, I guess, is the nearest body. I, I'm kind of hungry for Mercury. I would put in some robots on the surface. They have solar panels. There is a lot of sunlight on Mercury. They mine the material. They make more solar panels, more robots, and keep on doing this. And it turns out that after a few decades, the, what started as a few robots, by now, of course, they cover the entire surface, and the robots are getting in the way for each other. So there are some logistical problems that need to be solved. But basically, it takes about 40 years of exponential growth to totally disassemble Mercury. And would Mercury provide enough, uh, I don't know how thick each mm. solar panel would be? So if we want the kind of normal thick solar panel, you might want uh, some other planet. Uh, Venus might be in trouble. Um, <laughs> but you can also do things that are much lighter. So one elegant solution is to use really, really thin aluminium foil. If it's thin enough, the light pressure of the sun will exactly counterbalance gravity. So it will just hang there. It mm. doesn't even orbit. Now you can use these uh, panels, you tilt them slightly to focus sunlight onto some black body. That gets very hot. And then you connect that to something on the outside, a cooling element, and now you have a lot of heat flowing through. And this way, you can get a lot of energy. In fact, you could do this out of iron and steam and do a steampunk Dyson sphere. <laughs> steampunk Dyson sphere, that I can't picture, but I want to exist very much. Yeah, it would be pretty awesome. And it might very well be that really advanced civilizations, once we did, did the first Dyson spheres that we're dead serious about, now we're starting to do the artistic ones, the right. funny ones, uh, the hilarious Novelty ones. ones, yeah. Yeah, the meme Dyson spheres. <laughs> nice. Right, but at the same time, I can imagine you could really focus that light too. Yeah, now you have, notice, 10 to the 26 watts of power, and maybe you use it to power a laser, for example. A la what would you do with a laser like that? Sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Uh, well, of course, the ultimate version of a kid frying ants with a magnifying glass might be focusing <laughs> that laser on some remote planet, uh, which is not going to be good for the planet. So interstellar warfare, basically. You could do that, but it's <laughs> actually surprisingly crappy for interstellar warfare, uh, and which is probably very good news. Uh, basically, if you want to kind of attack somebody, you also need to know where to focus that area. So a planet is an easy target, but suppose now people are running away in a spaceship uh, randomly change your course. They're light years away. So you <laughs> Tiny can... little thing in terms yeah. of... Yeah. And you can try sweeping around your laser, but space is big. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually pretty good news and it can hide really well in space. Thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this, then make sure you click that subscribe button below because, well, you wouldn't want to miss out on any future videos now, would you?